I have to say, got it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am absolutely over the moon thrilled to be sitting here today with the author of my unequivocally favorite book of 2021, The Paper Palace. I would like to welcome Miranda Cowley Heller to my Zoom chat. Hi, Miranda. Hi. <laughs> happy, happy to be here, Deb. <laughs> well, this was um, this has been a long time coming. Um, Miranda and I connected back uh, when I reviewed this book in May, pre-publication. Uh, yeah, I believe it was May because it came out in July, correct? Came out July, yeah. Yeah, and I, um, you probably all remember, I predicted two things: one, that this book was going to be huge that came true, and two, that it was probably going to be at that point um, one of my top reads of 2021. And now as, as we're all compiling our list, it is um, absolutely so far at the top, there's not even a close second. I mean, probably my close second, Amor Tolls. So you're in really good, <laughs> Amor <laughs> Tolls, uh, Lincoln Highway. But yeah, nothing, nothing knocked it off, nothing came close, and the book hangover the best term ever the book hangover from this book was was for real so um i love anyway. that thank you <laughs> I mean, it, it, it really does it makes me really happy to hear that kind of thing because obviously as a as a first time you know a debut book it really you never gets Definitely never gets tired, I'll tell you that it much. Never gets old. You're not even sick of it after a year of interviews and not even remotely. And by the way, there's there's also, you know, the, the mean people out there. So <laughs> occasionally, not about the reviews per se, but you know, they'll sort of make personal attacks or something. But anyway. Interesting. Uh, well, you're yeah. yeah, yeah. Not um nobody would dare do that in my in my company. And um yeah, I um I want to dive into some questions. First, I wanted to say this was both Reese's pick and, and it was Barnes and Noble. Was that, am I right in that? Yeah, and it was Best Buy. No, something else. I can't remember okay. what it was. It was, um, well, uh, I feel really silly right now. I can't think. No, that's okay. That's a good problem to have. Um, but how many in the New York Times bestseller list? You were there for three months. Three months. Yeah, that's yeah. not sneeze at um, either. Yeah, no, it was great, and it and and it held at the top for quite a long time. So that was nice. I mean, that was great. And actually, um, when I found out when I got that call, it was quite funny because I burst into sobbing tears. <laughs> and I had to get off the phone and I called my mother, who is not Wallace, but you will understand. That <laughs> of, There's a bit of reaction. She said, well, I, she said, oh, well, that's good news. Why are you crying? And I said, well, I'm just uh, overwhelmed. And, and she said, well, I'm with Flossie and I'm having a martini, but just stop crying. I'll talk to you later. Like, <laughs> That was it. I was like, okay. She sounds wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, and Wallace was was quite a character. They say we always draw from from real life. That part. That part. I mean, my mother is definitely not Wallace, and Wallace is not my mother. Mm -hmm. um, my mother is. Even she will admit this. I don't think she's ever made a joke, laughed at a joke, or possibly ever heard a joke. And she's certainly not like one for the witty repartee. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah. Well, it was, um, I, it must have felt like a whirlwind. I mean, you, you know, pour everything into this and, and you hope and, and, and all of that, but there's very few authors that it actually does happen for. So it, um, it must have been, but I felt incredibly like I, I knew it, I knew it. And I've had so many friends, not just through uh, my Instagram account, but just friends who have said, you know, I read that book that you raved about back in the, you know, I read Paper Palace and you were right. I mean, it, it just struck a chord with, um, you know, I think women, women our age, um, I, I'm not saying that's the only people it struck a chord with, but it really. Um, yeah, no, I think it definitely did. Um, one of the in sort of interesting things is that um, in, in England, a lot of the blurbs and the quotes for the book were men. Um, and here it's, but, but you know, and more, and when I was just in London, like a lot of men come and talk about it, but 
Uh, but here it feels like it was very resonant, at least I hope so, with, yeah, with women who recognize at least, you know, the reality of what it is to be a woman of our age, that it's not a, a world, you know, we're not narrowing or, you know, withering away. Right? Yeah, the no, you made her such, an, a, you know, such so. an interesting, complex um, character. It was, it was fabulous. So, Good. Um, well, I wanted to, what I want to do is start, like I said, I want to start at the end because, um, and, and so spoiler alert, spoiler alert, <laughs> if you have not read this and you don't want to know things, turn this off and wait. <laughs> um, so, cause we, cause we are going to talk a little bit about the ending because a lot has been made. So I, when I, I read it, and I felt like I knew, I felt personally, like I knew exactly what had happened at the end. I knew what L, the decision L had made. Um, and then when the book came out and I started seeing more reviews, all of a sudden people were talking about the, the ambiguous ending. Right. And I started to think, well, we all read so fast and we read so much and like, what did I, did I miss something? And um, then it was Zibby. Owen's podcast yeah, yeah. where um, you, I, I mean, I think that's the first time that it really came up where she really said, let's talk about this. And you actually read the passages yeah. uh, um, where, where Elle makes her decision. And it was quite clear. I, I mean, I always thought it was clear, <laughs> um, okay. but evidently I was very wrong. And, um, and it was fascinating to me. I have to say. So you, uh, you felt the same? Well, yeah, I, mean, yeah I, I was really, really surprised. And, um, but even, you know, I, the first time I sat down with a couple of publishers in England, and it was two of them, and they both talked about the end. And then they, and one of them said, I'm so glad she stayed with Peter. And the other one was like, but no, she, you know, and no, she went with Jonah. Like, it, even, you know, these are people who were, Huh. Um, buy the book, right? Yeah. And I, so like, I think I need to go back and read my own book. <laughs> yeah, I, I was, I mean, I was genuinely surprised. But um, then when I, I, you know, I think a couple of things. One is that I, when I went back to read it and try to figure this out, um, and I read the line without sort of reading it out loud, so I, and putting the emphasis where it was in my head. Mm -hmm. um, if I, if the emphasis was in a different part of the sentence you could scan it differently. So that was really interesting. And, and in a way, in that sense, maybe like a script where mm -hmm. the, the, somebody writes a line of dialogue and their intention is one thing, but it could be read a completely different way. And whichever, whoever, you know, one actor gets it right or one actor gets it, right. you know, puts the emphasis in a different place and it becomes a different sentence. So in this case, it's, I'm just, you know, for the people who thought, it was Peter, it's kind of, I'm squeezing a ring, I'm squeezing it, and I do it one last time, and then I do this, right? As opposed to one final time before I take it off, and, right? So I think, like, that was sort of um, the, the part that I went, okay, I can see that, but more, uh, more interesting to me, it was, uh, in, this, in many cases, it's kind of um, divided in, um, by, uh, almost by age group. So, uh, a lot of younger women, um, a majority of, of uh, in terms of the people who felt different things, um, thought it was Peter. And most of the sort of more mature readers um, thought it was Jonas. And I think bring to it what your, in a way, your fantasy is. And I think maybe the, some of the, you know, when you're younger, you're thinking, you know, marriage, children, all of these things when you're older you're like you're thinking about Jonas right it was a, ter um, it was a terrible decision <laughs> it was a terrible decision. terrible decision to make she did and you know um I would not have made the same decision no. which and when I got to the very end I went okay what's she gonna do which I didn't decide until my you know I literally didn't decide until I think the last page but okay. um I, when I realized what it was, I, it upset me because I was like, no, no, but don't do it. Don't do it. She was, her, she was make, this was obviously what she was going to do. 
because of who she was not you know it was it was very amazing so you're kind of like I, I i recently listened to an interview with ann patchett where she said i am not one of those authors that outline you know some authors say i have to you know formulate an outline and i follow it you know i have to know what's going to happen and then you know others say no the characters tell their own you know are on their own path so you're more in that camp I'm entirely in that camp. As a matter of fact, I didn't know from day from one day to the next what I was going to be writing. Um, I mean, I'm in that you know, I I want to say it's Doctor O, but I sometimes get it wrong. Who said you know um, for that for him writing was like driving at night in fog, that uh, you 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 know with your headlights on, with your fog lights on, and that you could only see as far as the lights shine, but you can make the entire journey that way. Right. And that really spoke to me. I mean, when I was in the midst of writing this book and I kept going, well, I'm obviously not a real writer because, you know, a real writer doesn't, has an outline and a real author does, so filled. And then I went to hear a friend who's a novelist speak and he quoted that. And I remember sitting in this reading going, oh, wait, like, hang on a second, you know, because you get these things where it's like, oh, you have to put your ass in chair, or whatever they always say, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I'm like, well, I don't do that either. I kind of write when I want to, and when I'm inspired to, and I don't know what I'm gonna write that day, and I love the blank page, and, you know, so, you know, I, um, that was the fun for me, was just moving forward and, and finding it, and being, following, starting to follow characters instead of, and never, I mean, at the beginning, you're sort of leading a bit, but, you know, not leading. And, and I think um, in terms of the, the book as a whole, had I known who she was going to choose, it wouldn't have worked because unconsciously I would have given it away in some way. And it had to be the way this character makes decisions, which is fairly rashly if you, if you look at her, her life story, you know? Absolutely. Yeah, that's interesting. That's I, I never thought of it that way. But um, well, thank you for talking about that part of it because much has been much has been made, and and I was I, I was so curious. But I was for the record, um, I, you know, I I wish I wish it had been Peter, but I believed it. Was, I mean, I thought it was. Yeah, I mean, I'm by the way, I thought she went with Joanne. Me too. Me too. It, it, broke, it broke it broke my heart. I know. It broke my heart. <laughs> but I just I thought the way, I thought it was so clear. That, and that made and by the way, a lot of when I said, you know, I get some sort of a, a lot of or angry stuff. It's always, you know, I would have really liked this book, but I hate ambiguous endings. Huh. I just want to write and go like, no, 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 no. It's not ambiguous. You know? So I think I ultimately ended up sort of like saying something on saying like, go to Zibby's thing. I'm not going to. We're all such. Yeah, that's it's Yeah, I, I think I think in listening to it, I was like, well, yeah, I got I felt totally vindicated. It was not. Yeah. Well. Right. <laughs> so, um, well, so in, in talking about when you're saying I, 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 you, that you weren't an author, you know, I'm, I'm not a writer yet, yeah, was this truly, you had never written anything before? Oh, no. I have never like, written a, a novel before. Not, not before. right. Screenplays and... No, I had never written a screenplay. No? Okay. Um, I had ghostwritten a couple okay. of times for people. Um, I had been in the in the book world for a long time before I got into television. Um, and I had written a lot of poetry and published some poetry. Um, and, um, you know, journalism stuff, but no, no fiction. But I, I mean, I had certainly tried. I started this book, um, at, I, I sort of started a bunch of different book ideas, and this was one of them, mm -hmm. a long time ago, I mean, or, you know, 10 years or something ago. And, and then I just didn't, I sort of put them away and said, well, we'll see, and I just didn't, and I did something else. And, but I always, always had promised myself and had sort of, as a kid, defined myself as a writer. You know, I was like, well, of course I'm writing. That's what I'm gonna do with my life. Mm -hmm. um, and I went and I moved to Italy and, you know, with the intention of writing a novel and I had nothing to say you know I think I think that that's for me it's like I had a lot to say in poetry but I did not have a lot to say in, in, uh, of what I was interested in saying let's put right. that way um and so it felt it just didn't it wasn't good enough 
is, you know, is what it, it was for me. And I'm, I had to get out of criticizing myself. Like I come from a family of editors, so I couldn't get away from that person going, well, is being edited. <laughs> yeah. And also trying to write well, which is, I think is like the curse of, mm -hmm. of writing is to try to write well, you know, because the first few pages, when I finally came back to this, having, you know, written, gone much more into poetry and stuff, mm -hmm. um, instead of writing uh, unconsciously, um, I, I thought, well, it's really well written, but it's so tight. And like, it was like, I was trying to just sort of do something like in miniature and it just had no blood. Right. Um, okay. and so I think that it just took me a really long time to go. It doesn't have to be good. And also nobody ever has to read it. Nobody's waiting for this. Nobody knows you exist. Right? The pressure off. Um, and so I could just, I felt I allowed myself the freedom, I think. Well, it, um, that's a good segue talking about a family of editors because um, I, I don't remember what interview it was where I, or something I read about you where you talked about your grandfather, Malcolm Cowley. And I said to myself, I know that name. I know that name. And then I was like, it's my portable Faulkner. This is your grandfather. That is my Malcolm grandpa. Faulkner, <laughs> but Malcolm Cowley, who compiled this, The Portable Faulkner, which I um, is like, for Faulkner lovers, this is the um, holy grail of deciphering Faulkner, at least for me, and at least for the seminars I took, they told us we had to have this. Yeah, and, and, and indeed, um, put Faulkner back in print. He was out of print and had gotten nothing but pan reviews and when my grandfather um wanted to do this he uh faulkner was writing crappy screenplays he was living in los angeles away from mm -hmm. his family and um my grandfather wrote to him to say he wanted to do this um and didn't hear back for a really long time and when he finally did he thought well it's dead and then uh faulkner finally wrote back and he said i apologize for not getting back to you sooner, but I only open my mail twice a year, I think it was. <laughs> and, um, yeah. and, and also most of my, I don't have any copies of my books and most of them are out of print. So my grandfather, said, well, I have got, uh, you know, first editions of all of them, so I'll just cut them up and put them back together. He had this idea of right, creating a, a one contiguous or continuous mm -hmm. world out of all these. Um, and so he did, and it was published, and Faulkner won the Nobel Prize for it. Yeah. So that was a pretty, that's a biggie. <laughs> um, yeah, 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 no. He was an editor and a writer. Sort of, my grandfather was sort of a, like the Boswell of his generation. He was, he's written many, many, he wrote many, many books um, that were about his generation of writers okay. and his colleagues and kind of um, historical, historical literary books. Um, and also, of course, about his journey. And then he was a he was an editor, and he was a you know, editor in the Republic. He was an editor at Viking. So um, I definitely did. Grow, and my father is also a book editor. Um, so you know, I did grow up very much in that in that soup. Yeah, lots of family support, pressure, possibly. <laughs> yeah, both, both. My grandfather, like he used to say, and actually, there's a there's a uh, his sort of his selected letters I think or his yeah some big volume that came out a couple of years ago mm -hmm. um, and one of the letters in there is a letter he wrote to me when I was in college okay. and it just sort of says you know put you have to get your name in print you have to get your name in print and I remember you know and it's like some your mother telling you not to publish your parish <laughs> but that's what he was just kept saying and I was like and the pressure it was, mm -hmm. All it made me do was not get my name in print right? <laughs> for years, <laughs> because what you want to—it's like telling, it's like somebody saying, you know, you're overweight. Stop, stop. You have to stop eating that. I'm like, all you're going to do is eat it, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> um, he would be so proud. Yeah. So yeah. So anyway, but I mean, it all. Um, and my father too was very critical of my writing, even when I was eleven. Um, so, so editing was definitely in my blood 
too. But I also wrote poetry. You probably saw some. I don't. I posted on my Instagram. If I don't know if you saw some of these poems. I didn't. I didn't. I'll have to go back and look. <laughs> that I I wrote when I was eight or nine years old. That uh -oh. um, that actually my grandfather's biographer reached out to me. Oh. Um, in um, he's in in the Netherlands, and he reached out to me after reading the Paper Palace, and um, one and he said, you know, you were always a a, a poet I knew or something, and I found in your grandfather's papers in Chicago at the Peabody Library. And by the way, I found and photographed at the time a book of nature poems you wrote for him for his birthday, and. Um, Wow. I have no you know, memory of this whatsoever. Um, and I put a couple of them. But the funny thing was I signed them all M. Cowley like at the bottom of each page because, you know, very professional, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, so I obviously thought of myself. Really nice story. <laughs> yeah. And it was great that he found them. I mean, I have no... Yeah. And some of them were kind of good, actually. Yeah, what a treasure that, that, they, didn't, that they didn't end up someplace. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's... Well, they did. They ended up in, like, a vault. But yeah. He, he found them so yeah that's that is really cool that's a nice story well you're carrying on the family legacy as it were yeah i mean the well, fun thing is my grandfather was also a published poet and my father um writes um is a historian writes his mil military history actually although he is was like you know the opposite of a military person but he's a military historian mm -hmm. uh, but i'm the first one in my that side of my family well i guess anyone in my family um to write a novel so it's kind of yeah. like oh okay so i did this so that's great so that's another good segue to say and i know authors don't like the, you know don't like this question i didn't mean it to be taboo but i are you planning to write again do you want to write again do you feel like you're still under the you know, groundswell of this? Um, I mean, absolutely. And I hope I can, I'll find something. Um, I haven't, I won't know what it is until I, until I start. And I'm sort of definitely um, playing around with, with stuff. I am, but at the moment I'm writing uh, the scripts for the mini series for HBO. So, I wondered if that was going to happen. Uh, yeah, and so I've never written scripts before, but I've written the pilot and now we're working on that. And then I think we'll start working on some other scripts, which is very strange because basically as a as a novelist, I want to start looking into some other, you know, digging into other territory. Mm -hmm. um, and this is retelling, finding a new way to or adapt and retell right. the same story, which is fascinating and also uh, you know, and also an odd experience because it does keep me in this place now mm -hmm. with this story and this, these characters. And, um, and so I'll have to finish that, I think, before I can really fully get out from under. And I also, I know I need to go back to poetry uh, to sort of loosen up the, the silt, maybe. <laughs> um, I think also because, uh, you know, I, I needed to, poetry helps me to get into a space where I don't think ahead of time, as I was saying. And now it's really hard. Um, I mean, having done this, now I'm out there. Before I was completely anonymous. And obviously that's the most amazing thing in the world, but then the expectations are higher and I'm terrible. That's why I didn't do it until I did it because I was a perfectionist and I didn't want to humiliate myself. And so there's all sorts of reasons for me never to write a book again, lest I don't get it right the second time. Oh. Um, so I have to, like, I know what I have to do is A, not worry about that, and B, right. get back to kind of my, back to something a little messier. Or mm -hmm. more, well, it makes perfect um, sense to me that, that poetry is your first love because the writing is so beautiful. I mean, I'm so picky. Anybody who follows me, I'm, I'm, so, I'm so picky about what I, what I five star and, and, and what I read. And it was just, there was, um, so that, that's, that's interesting to hear. I didn't know that. And um, I think 
and there is a ton of pressure. Everybody talks about the sophomore novel, the sophomore novel, you know. Um, but have you ever thought, and this just came to, as we were talking about the ending, that this just all of a sudden occurred to me, would it ever be appropriate to think about a sequel to what happens to Ellen? I know. I ask, I mean, I do ask, definitely. I, I mean, I certainly have no intention of doing it, but that right. doesn't I just all of a sudden mean, thought, like, wouldn't that be what happened? Happened? No. I mean, I think the, um, in a way, the difficulty there, um, what, inter what would interest me there, but the difficulty mm -hmm. is that, you know, at a certain point, and this is almost speaks to sort of not the randomness of her decision, but, you know, that if you have two equally uh, powerful choices and equally powerful men and everything's equal, that similarly, even if the relationship is different, marriage, you're still going to be in six months or a year arguing about toilet paper or arguing, you know, and so because of course, no matter how much, I mean, she loves Peter, right? And so, but there's still oh, it's very be, messy. It's very messy. And there's banality. And so all of those things, it's like, do we really want to see like Ellen Jonas mm, arguing and her going back to Peter? Maybe we do. Yeah. <laughs> um, maybe we do. <laughs> maybe we do. Maybe we don't. But I, I, I think my instinct would be to, to, and I think sort of informed by this HBO thing mm -hmm. is that I, uh, I'm, I'm looking for new characters and a, and a new uh, way of telling a story. That totally makes sense. That totally makes sense too. Right. Okay. Well, my last question, and it's always my favorite question. Um, as somebody, uh, you know, who's clearly loved books, you know, you must have been a reader as a child and you were a writer as a child. I would love to know who you love to read, who, you know, what authors you are, uh, are drawn to, recommend, books that you love, anything, anything you would want to share with us. What's on your nightstand? <laughs> oh, my nightstand. Um, uh, the book I'm reading now that I am um, obsessed with is called Sorrow and Bliss. Um, by Meg Mason. And has it come out here yet? I got it in London. So I don't I think, think it is. I think it is. I, I, I don't know if what I'm seeing is um, or, or uh, maybe it maybe it has. It's yeah. I'm obsessed. It's okay. Uh, it's genius. Um, and uh, I love, you know, I love Kim Towell. I love the gentleman in Moscow, you know, as well. <laughs> that kind of uh, I think in terms of I mean, many, obviously, um, my first and always love will be Jane Austen. Um, I just, I, you know, I think I probably have, you know, that's my comfort food. Um, right. But as you say, when I was, um, I remember one summer and I was 11 or around 11 and I, and I read 40 novels and there were, and I was like, you know, included Pride and Prejudice and, you know, Lord of the Rings, but, and also, you know, Mary Reynolds, The King Must Die. I mean, it wasn't like a wow. really particularly easy reading list. But right. I set this, that was my summer. I was going to read 40 novels. Um, and I wrote them all down. And, and you know, yeah. I did. Um, but, and of course, those books stick with you in a, in a very particular way. Mm -hmm. um, as, a, as, a more, as an adult reader, I mean, um, I think a couple of novelists would have been, I mean, I love Ellie Smith. Uh, there's so many novelists I love, but you can't, but um, definitely was very influenced by James Salter. Um, I think Light Years is, was a very influential book for me and influential uh, in terms of, of how you can tell stories without having to, by showing them in small gestures mm -hmm. and, and environments and landscapes instead of through you know whatever they call it you know, character interiority or you know um uh and so and i think you know so light years is, is a book that i just absolutely loved and when i was working on the paper palace i read um i read uh what's it called um all the light we cannot see mm -hmm. and when I got to the end of it, 
I went, oh my gosh, okay. Like the whole time through, I thought I knew what the metaphor was. Right. And then I got to the end and I was so blown away mm-hmm. by the end and Beautiful. by the metaphor. Have you read his new book? Have you read Cloud Cuckoo? I haven't Cloud Cuckoo, but I haven't read it yet. Um, I'll be interested to hear what you think. Um, yeah, I mean, um, I started it. Okay. I struggle. I, yeah. I struggle with that. I yeah. um, I, uh, the next one I want to read, mainly because everybody keeps writing about it on Instagram, is Still Life, which I haven't read yet. Have you read Still Life? I, there's another book. I, that book should have been, and I got an early copy. I got it from um, Blackwell. I got a signed copy shipped over from London when it was out there and not here. Mm-hmm. Um, and because it was so, I was like, this book was clearly written for me. <laughs> it's literally, and... I have not finished it. <laughs> well, I'm so interested because um, uh, a lot of people have said it's their favorite book of the year, and I'm interested. You know, I haven't obviously read it yet. I just, I actually just uh, ordered it, so we'll see. Um, yeah, but I may yeah, have given I mean, up a little bit too early. I tend to, when you have so many different things pulling at you, I maybe needed to give it. I just, I felt like it wasn't coming together by around. I don't know. Maybe I was probably a third of the way through and um i set it aside and have right. no one back but all right well we'll have to have that conversation we'll see. I, would love to. I would love to yeah no it had all the earmarks all the bells and whistles of a dev book i was i mean so much so like i said that i was like i need a you know a signed first edition from black walls before i even so right i think you'll love sorrow and bliss if you haven't read it yet it's okay it, it's it, I, it's so funny but tragic and amazingly right. observed and I, I mean I, I laugh out loud and then I want to cry it's that kind of that's it, yeah. That's um, so yeah and it also does the sort of um, straddling time periods and she but she does it so deftly and okay. um, so yeah, yeah I, it, I loved yeah and I, I wasn't the only one to say that the it was so well laid out the 24 hours the book being 24 hours but then jumping back in time it just it worked it worked so well I, I, i'm glad that you think that i mean it it was um that was sort of the big that was the only concept i started with was was that was the notion of a life lived in 24 hours and the same character's life lived in moments in the important moments that happened over the 50 years that lead to that day Mm-hmm. but that are can be almost random but are her her memories her moments her stories of the reasons she's the way she is and um so you know so that was really fun it was also fun to discover those moments actually you know because it's not like i knew what they were <laughs> what they were going to be and so again that was an, a really uh interesting uh, sort of unfolding process for me Definitely. Wow. It was, it was such a joy. And as Miranda and I were talking before I turned on record, I love to show my copy that does not have a sticker on it, despite how thrilled I was when this was picked up by Reese and Barnes and Noble and all of that, because I just, I, I, this is one of those books and you're one of those authors that I've taken so much joy in having had the opportunity to review it early and then watching it just you know come into its own and for because it is it's such a beautiful such a beautiful book so well a thank you b i'm so glad you were right <laughs> and also i'm so grateful i was as i was saying earlier i think you were my first um review you know um well, as that. such and i and it, i will never you know, I will never forget it. It was, oh, it was one wow. of those things where I, where I got goosebumps, you know, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And so, uh, so yeah, it's like, it's a part of my story now. So thank you a lot. Well, I, I appreciate you this, um, this, I, I so wanted to talk to you and I so, I'm so grateful December. It's so busy for everybody that you took the time and, um, yeah, I, I it just, uh, I think you're going to be seeing a lot of this in the next couple of weeks as we all compile our, best of 2021 list, certainly mine. Okay, well, I hope so. I hope you're right about that too. <laughs> and thank you for having me on. I mean, it's- oh, Miranda, it's absolutely a pleasure. Thank you. Cool, all right. Okay. <laughs> I will, we'll speak soon about other books. Yes, anyway. I would love that, still life. Have yes. a book club. All right, I'm going, I'm going. <laughs> I'm gonna go read. All right, bye everybody.